I flew all the way in for Texas to this. You gotta give me more than that. How are you doing today? There we go, there we go. This is the Michigan I remember. I am a native Michigander. I'm from Kalamazoo originally, so thank you so much for having me out here. I'm super excited to be back into Detroit. I can almost feel University of Michigan. I'm so close to it, I'm so close to it. So what I'm gonna do now is tell you a little bit about how I packed my everything up in my Camry. I drove down to Texas and I thought I was just gonna be a boring old chemistry professor. But about four years ago, that all changed. And I was sitting at my desk just answering emails. And I got this email from a colleague. And he said, Kate, I'm going to be on We Are Austin, which is like our local variety show. It comes on right after our morning news. He's like, I'm going to be on We Are Austin. And I'm going to promote this upcoming event. Can you do some kind of like science thing and make it exciting? And as someone who's never been on TV before, I was like, yes, I can do that. Yes, I'm there. So a week later, I showed up, and I was basically his just like prop monkey. I didn't even have a mic on. I was standing there just grinning like an idiot, handing him gloves, liquid nitrogen, smiling at the camera. And as soon as the segment was over, the general manager came in. I mean, she's just like beautiful blonde woman dressed to the nines, and she was like, that was awesome. Can you do anything for Halloween? And before I even allowed my brain to process the question, my body had already reacted, I took my palm and put it directly in my colleague's chest, shoved him out of the way, and charged at this woman. I was like, yes, I can do a genie, I can do a ghost, I can make a pumpkin vomit, explode, and smoke, what do you want? And she was like, shh, 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 shh crazy lady, shh, 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 stop that. <laughs> and so about a month later, I came back, and I did my very first segment on We Are Austin. It went great, I was very happy with it. And she came in again and asked, do you do something for Thanksgiving? Then what about Christmas? Then what about New Year's? So on and so forth. And all of a sudden, without knowing it, I'd ended up with a monthly segment on We Are Austin. And for the very first year, I really had to figure out how to fine tune my language. Because like I said, I'm a chemistry professor. I usually have 75 minutes where I get to talk about one thing to 500 students who are forced to be in that classroom, right? They probably don't want to be there. And so I had to learn how to do one demonstration in five minutes and talk to a camera, but to a greater audience of a number of different people. And if I bore the audience, they change the channel, which means I don't get to go back on TV. And so what I started doing was starting by talking with the real world application. I can't start with the definition of enthalpy, click, you change the channel. So <laughs> I have to start with the real world application. Like today I'm going to do X and it's going to show you Y. Then I do my demonstration. Now I was raised by psychologists. I love my parents some, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I was raised by psychologists. And so we are firm believers of William James's theory of emotional memory. So if you have an emotional response to something, you're more likely to make that memory. So when I do a science experiment, I'm doing everything I can. I'm throwing everything I've got at you to try to make you excited, to try to hopefully let you see why I love science. And then I have about 60 seconds if we're in person, but through a camera, it's 20. 20 seconds to shove that knowledge into your brain as hard and as fast as I possibly can. And so for the first year, I really had to fine tune that. I was not good, let's be honest, I really had to fix that. And after I kind of mastered, nah, mastered that, I started doing a monthly segment on another local Austin show, then I started doing a monthly segment in Dallas, which led to one of my favorite partnerships which was with Amy Poehler Smart Girls. Do you know Amy Poehler? Yes? Okay. So now, Amy Poehler and her best friend Meredith Walker formed this organization called Amy Poehler Smart Girls. And what they do is they feature smart, strong, awesome women. And that's it. And so, yeah, woo, let's give it up for that. <laughs> and so what they did is they came out to my lab in Austin and they filmed several different demonstrations. And for the first time ever, I could get real-time feedback for my explanation. So I would do something, do a demo, explain it perfectly. And I would look at the producer and she'd either be right there with me or she'd have this face that let me know that halfway through my explanation, I started speaking in Klingon, right? Um, so <laughs> had to change that a little bit. And very slowly, over time, we were able to figure out exactly how to talk to a seven-year-old girl and a seven-year-old grandmother, which which is not easy, right? They have a totally different science knowledge. But then these videos were edited really well, like really, really well. And they caught the attention of NBC Nightly News and then CNN Great Big Story. Again, a different audience. I had to figure out how to talk about science at a news platform. No longer like, yay, science. Like, no, that does not work on NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt would not go for that. Let me tell you that right now. And so what I had to do is figure out how to talk about science in an articulate way, but still be passionate. How can you get that bubbly aspect in while being like, yes, and then I did the enthalpy. Right now. That doesn't work. Well, then that caught the attention of Kelly Pickler, which caught the attention of Wendy Williams, which then more recently caught the attention of Stephen Colbert. Oh my gosh. And so, yeah, whoa! I am the very first. 
first, I believe, I'm the very first female scientist to actually perform on late night television. So thank you, Stephen, for being a STEM advocate. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. And he's incredible because he let me blow up stuff. He actually breathed fire. I mean, look at my face, y'all. I look like an idiot. I'm like, yeah! <laughs> Watch the clip. I actually act like an idiot, too. It happened. Um, but here's the thing. I did what I promised myself I would never, ever do. And I read the comments. Yeah, I read the comments on the YouTube. I read the comments and everything. And let's be honest, they weren't all positive. You know, haters are going to hate, but psh, psh, I don't have time for that noise. We're not focusing on that. Um, so today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did focus on. First comment I read was, how cool. I was like, OK. OK, I still have my self-esteem. We're good. The next one, science. That was great. Then I had this one. I wish I had a teacher like her when I was growing up. My seven-year-old daughter was mesmerized by the video. Couldn't take her eyes off the screen. Thank you for showing young girls that scientists can be women, too. I messed that up, but close enough. OK, now this one. <laughs> this is the one that came and literally just Boom, popped me right in the gut, right in the stomach. I finally found a role model for my 10-year-old self. Okay, let me say that again. I finally found a role model for my 10-year-old self. I can relate to this comment. You are looking at the girl who grew up going, Bill, 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 right? Bill Nye the science guy, yeah? I loved him. I, I, I still love him. He's fantastic. I've yet to meet him. Bill, if you're out there, come talk to me. Um, but... Wouldn't it have been cool if there was like one female scientist, like a Jill Nye the science gal or something like that, right? That was kind of my opinion. And so when I read this comment, it kind of shook me. And I was like, all right, this isn't about me. It's not cool that I got to meet Wendy Williams. It's not cool that I got to meet Kelly Pickler. This is bigger than this. So I figured I have a platform, and I need to do something with this platform. Otherwise, my 10-year-old self is going to hate me forever. So I did what I always do, and I listened to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Every smart woman knows to listen to Taylor Swift. So I don't know her either, but I'm assuming that she's a smart, strong, wonderful, talented, beautiful woman. And I believe that because she has a squad. And she supports her friends. <laughs> but she supports her friends. If you listen to her interview, she talks about her friends. She doesn't talk about herself. She supports her friends. She shares their music. She, if any opportunity where she can play their song, she does. So I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> And so, and I, I'm not good with the word squad. It just doesn't come out of my mouth well. So I decided I'm going to build a STEM army, OK, STEM army. So here's the first person I begged to join me. She's 32. She's my age. She's smarter, better. Just, she's just better than me in all aspects, prettier, everything. But I was like, you got to join me. I love her. Here's what she did. She figured out how to put a mass spec on the end of a pen so that in surgery, you can actually do surgery and test cells right there in real time and find out if those cells are cancerous or benign. She has changed the world of modern medicine. It was so cool, it was featured on Grey's Anatomy, OK? So cool. Let's give it up for Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. And then. And then I had to recruit a lot of other people. Me, Emily Kay, she just figures out how to make eggs glow as soon as they're fertilized. So Shagufta Shabir, her students call her Shabay, enough said, OK? We've got Fatima Fakhardine. She just won an award for Texas 10, meaning she's one of the top 10 pro best professors in Texas. Well, actually, it's the University of Texas, but we think we're the better than everything. So she's, she's the best professor in Texas, and that's what I'm going to go with. And so I've decided in my STEM army, I'm going to talk about them in every opportunity I can. I'm going to share their stuff. If I can talk about their science, I'm going to do it. So that was the first thing I decided to do with my platform. Number two, I decided I have to engage in evidence-based conversations. I have to. When someone says climate change isn't real, I no longer can be like, la, 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 la. Now I'm like, uh, what? Come over here. And we start a conversation. And so I always go with questions, and I always go with data. I'm, and I will say, look at this, look at this plot. For me, this was enough to know that humans actually influence climate change. I know that. And they're like, no, 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 not that one. I'm like, OK, what about this one? And they're like, nah. how about this one? <laughs> no. So if, they, if you can't get to them with data, and you can't get them to with evidence-based conversations, take a step back. How was that data collected? Ask them, how, how was the data collected? Why don't you like this? What is it about that? Is there something I'm missing? I must not be seeing something. What is it? Start this conversation. You have to. We are not in a place anymore where we can just like, let it go. You have to engage in that conversation. Now, the last thing that I think is the most important thing to do is you got to talk to kids. you got to talk to a lot of kids, as many kids as you can. you got to talk to sick kids. Got to talk to crazy kids. Got to talk to all the kids. And the best thing you can ask them is, what do you want to do with your life? And if they say science, you pick them up, and you yell, and you scream, and you just celebrate them. On Saturday, I was in Connecticut. A girl told me she wanted to be a quantum physicist. Quantum physicist. I was like, how do you know those words? 
she responded with, I know I'm not going to make a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. I am so mad at myself that I didn't get a picture with her. I didn't ask her name. I didn't get, I was just shocked. I was just so excited because I know I'm going to be working for her in like 20 years. It's going to be fantastic. But the biggest thing and my biggest problem is I have this issue where I'm extroverted. I'm bubbly. I love being in front of a crowd, but most of my colleagues don't. And I get the same question every time. How? How do you engage in this conversation? How do you actually do this? Well, fire, duh. I mean, that's my answer. I love fire. I love breathing fire. I love setting myself on fire. I love setting you on fire. I love everything, right? That is my favorite thing to do. And so what I am doing now with my STEM army is I'm going around and I'm trying to teach everybody how to breathe fire. Meet Jax. Jax I taught how to breathe fire three years ago. He now goes around to student organizations on campus, breathes fire during an LGBTQ um, allyship training. So instead of being like, be nice to your peers, he's like, fire, fire, fire. It's awesome. It's so cool. Me, Nicole. Nicole's a former student of mine. She's now a graduate student at Rice University. She has her own outreach program. She does her own program. She does demonstrations. She talks to kids on her own. She's a rock star again. She's fantastic. Me, Victor. Now, just for the record, you and I know Victor the, the same at this point, because he just emailed me. He's a stranger. I don't know him. But he reached out to me. <laughs> he goes, I work for Teach for America at an inner city school. I don't have the resources you have, but I figured out how to get them from Home Depot. I was like, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> then he wanted to show me he's mastered the fire-breathing dragon. Okay, he's mastered it. So he's using this, using fire to engage his students. Now it's your turn. Please, please become part of my STEM army. If you hear incorrect science, correct it. If you see good science, share it. Not a blog. Don't you dare share a blog, okay? Share real science. That's a different TED Talk. We'll talk about that later. And then the last thing is you've got to talk to kids. So are you ready? I'm going to teach you how to breathe science or breathe fire right now. Here we go. All right. Cornstarch, number one, use cornstarch. Oh, wait, also, don't do this at home. OK, there we go. Now, you're going to put it in your mouth. You take a deep breath, you use your fire, and then you go for it. OK, you absolutely have to go for it. Are you ready? Stem, 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 